Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a guide for the Nation of Bahamanis in EU4 1.35. But before this video begins, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps out way more than you know. With that out of the way, let's take a look at Bahamanis. Bahamanis is a nation located in India. It is probably one of the most powerful starting nations in India at the start of the game, second only to Vijayanagar, who are going to be our arch rivals basically until we gobble them up and eat them. There is actually a unique achievement for Bahmanis where basically you have to conquer Vigianagar. It's the same thing for Vigianagar, you just have to conquer Bahmanis. And honestly, both of these are kind of interchangeable. I know a lot of people who like playing India will either choose Bahmanis or Vigianagar or both as they're both very similar, but also very different with Bahmanis starting out as Shia Muslim and Vigianagar being largely Hindu as you can see right here. But before we get into our nations, we need to deal with our estates. So for the Brahmins, you want to give out Brahmin legitimacy to rule, Brahmin education, and you can give out support of the Brahmins if you want. It's ultimately up to you. However, the religious influence will go up by quite a bit, and we don't really struggle too much with religious unity, even though we are in India and everything is the wrong religion, everything is Hindu. However, we are an Indian Sultan, which gives us a bunch of buffs to accepting heathens, so it's not really too much of a problem. So you can go ahead and give it out if you want. I'm not going to give it out here. For the Alema, you want to give out religious state, establish religious schools, grant residence to local scholar, and we'll pick this out just in a moment, religious diplomats, and expansion of zealotry. Now, the reason we want to give that out is because it gives us extra 5% morale of armies when we're at war with heretics or heathens. And since we are the only Shia nation in all of India, that means we are going to be getting these buffs basically almost the entire game. So go ahead and and give out expansionist zealotry. For the Mothras, you want to give out primacy of the Mothras, increase Mothra recruitment, and promote Mothrani development. For the Emirs, you want to give out expand fortifications and right of council. And for the Jains, you want to give out Jain political control, promote Jain bookkeeping, and later, once we need this, we're going to take indebted to the Jains. This is basically the exact same thing as indebted to the burgers. So we'll take this once we need it. When you get this here, you're going to be able to invite a scholar. Honestly, it's ultimately up to you what you want to invite. However, I typically recommend inviting the aggressive expansion impact guy. There really is no other way to reduce expansion, and you are going to be getting quite a bit of aggressive expansion in India since you will be expanding largely into the exact same religious group the entire time. You are a Shia nation, everyone else is Hindu, so you are going to be getting quite a bit of aggressive expansion, so I recommend taking the Hanbali scholar. And don't forget to summon the diet and seize land. Also, as a Shia nation, you have the these interactions here where you can do these things. Since we're not super powerful yet, these really don't do too much. However, I recommend taking either leaning in taxation, land acquisition is meh, it's okay. Christian tax farming is fine as well. Since I really don't need the Diplo rep, since I'm not really trying to get any allies, and I'll show you which allies to get in just a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick the efficient tax farming for that extra tax, since most of our money is going to be coming from tax, and just for that little bit of money up front. Speaking of allies, for your allies as Bahmanis, you really don't need to ally anyone, to be honest. You can solo pretty much your entire playthrough until you have to fight some of the bigger people like Timrids, like maybe the Ming, maybe someone else here. Bengal will often get really big, so you might have to fight them, or someone like the Mamluks. So until then, you really don't need any allies. However, if you want some allies at the beginning of the game, I recommend allying both Melwar, and you can also ally Orissa. I'm going to go ahead and ally Orissa here, since they might be able to help us out against Vigianagar, especially since Vigianagar is a rival. And once a day passes, I will go ahead and also ally Mawar as well. This isn't necessary. You can solo the war with Vigianagar. I've done it many, many times. However, if you want some help and if you don't mind waiting, then you can go ahead and ally Orissa and Mawar. Also, once you have everything set up, make sure you take the decision here and do denouncement of sex practices and enforce religious unity. Also, for your rivals, make sure you can pick Vigianagar. Obviously, you want to be a rival to the Jangar. You can go ahead and pick someone else. You can pick Gujarat. Just make sure the Vijayanagar and Gujarat do not ally, as that can be quite a bad thing to happen at the start of the game. So hopefully it doesn't happen just yet. And for your third ally, it really is up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and rival Jeanpour. And again, let's hope they don't ally with Vijayanagar. By the way, if you can ally Jeanpour, that is also another decent ally to have, especially as you expand the north. I wasn't able to do that in 
this game unfortunately and it's honestly typically a 50 50 chance whether jean Poir rivals you or not so if you want to be allied to jean Poir, you can keep restarting and basically just keep going until you get it or if you're like me and you don't want to restart then you can just keep going without being allied to jean Poir. it really isn't necessary and oftentimes they won't even help you out with the janagar anyway better to be allied to someone in the south all right and by this point in the game you should be ready to fight your first war your first war is going to be against your arch rival Vigianagar. you want to attack Vigianagar as soon as possible is because if you keep waiting Vigianagar is only going to get more and more powerful and you are only going to get weaker since you don't have a coastline and you don't have access to these very lucrative trade ports over here so go ahead and attack Vigianagar for the reconquest i got some claims here both manually with a spy network but also just from events in the game i got a claim on Vigianagar right here this province manually from my spy network and the reason i did that is because in the peace deal we are going to want to take this one right here the city of victory you typically are able to take it unless Vigianagar has been developing like crazy however we also do want to take the lost cores that we have here on the coastlines you can see right here so go ahead and attack Vigianagar do it for the reconquest of whichever province over here call in any of your allies if they do join keep in mind you are able to solo this war unless Vigianagar allies someone like Jean Poor, Malwa, Melwar, Delhi, someone up here, someone who you're rival to, then you might have an issue and you might need your allies. However, I'm going to go ahead and attack them for Goa, call in my ally of Arissa, and go right in. For your peace deal with Vigianagar, you should do something like this. The war with them was not hard at all. In fact, Arissa kind of helped me steamroll them, especially up here in the north, taking these forts. Really, the only difficult part with Vigianagar, especially if you attack them early, is just their forts. If you wait, which you shouldn't be doing, then Vigianagar can get quite a strong army. However, if you attack them early like I did, then it's super easy. Their army is not very big. It's actually quite a small army. Not only that, but your army is much higher quality than theirs, and you have really good rulers, so you're going to be getting some military tech much quicker than they are. But anyway, for the peace deal with Vigianagar, of course, you want to take all of the cores that you lost from Vigianagar, so take all of these cores right here. You also want to take their capital, the city of Vigianagar itself, and if you can, take a province right over here. The reason you want to take a province over here is because we are going to be expanding into this area through our mission tree. Along with that, you can take some other province as well. It's really up to you. However, I'd recommend to not really be doing that just because, again, it's stuff that you have to core. I'm just going to take this one right here since it doesn't take any extra diplo power. This one right here. You can, again, take some other ones around here if you want to. However, I'm just going to take this and take some money from Vigianagar. Let's actually see how much we're going to be getting from this because sometimes you don't really want to take it if someone else is going to get it. But it looks like here we'll be getting most of the money here. So I'm just going to take some money. No war reps since we want to be attacking Vigianagar relatively soon. So for your peace seal, make sure you take something along the lines of this. Make sure you take their capital of Vigianagar and a province right here so that you can expand here and some money. And there we go. Once we recover our coastline, we can complete this mission called Recover Conkton Ports. You can take this right now if you want. It's ultimately up to you. You have the extra cavalry combat ability, which is really, really good, as well as the cavalry cost. So you can take an hour. You can wait until you're going to be fighting someone bigger, maybe some up north. It really is up to you. It does last for 20 years, so it's quite a long time. And once you own Vigianagar, you can complete this mission called The Fall of Vigianagar, and you actually get a ton of money, basically loot Vigianagar. Vigianagar. You cause a bunch of devastation there, and you also get an event as well as some permanent claims. And there you go here, the Fall of Vigianagar, which is actually an event that you get. I'm sure you've probably seen if you play in the Muslim world and stuff, you might get that event that says the Fall of Vigianagar. This is what this is. This is when Bahmanis takes Vigianagar. In some games, it doesn't happen, and if you don't see that happen, that usually means that Bahmanis lost to Vigianagar, and when you see it happen, that typically means that Bahmanis is winning. And there you go. To the victor goes the spoils. We get a bunch of dev in our capital of Vidar and Vigianagar becomes even more devastating. And by this point, if you haven't already, start improving relations with your vassal. We want to annex our vassal as soon as possible so we can complete this mission right here and get a bunch of claims. I've been improving with my vassal since the start of the game, so I'm going to go ahead and annex them. And once you annex your vassal and have the province meet the requirements, you complete this mission called Reign in the Velmas. It is going to give you some claims on a bunch of 
the provinces right here, which again is why we wanted to take the province right here. It's not necessarily super necessary once you annex your vassals. However, it does prevent it from them expanding into Bahamanis. For your first government reform as Bahamanis, I recommend taking Empower the Polygars. The minus 5% dev cost is really nice. The extra 10% infantry combat ability is absolutely insane. It is so overpowered. It's actually crazy. By the way, your army in Bahamanis will basically be undefeatable. You'll be the undisputed masters of India, so do keep that in mind. And this is only going to take us one step closer to it. So for your tier 2 government reform, take Empower the Fully Guards. And now it's time to prepare for your second war. Your second war is going to be against Gujarat. Now, in order to do this war against Gujarat, we need to manually kickstart a mission tree. So go ahead and send a spy and start building a spy network. We want to build a spy network on these provinces over here, at least one or two of them so that we can take them and complete this mission right here, the secure the Kandesh so that we can keep expanding. And now it is time to declare your second war against Gujarat. Typically, Gujarat will ally someone big around here, maybe Malwa or Janpur. In this case, they have actually allied Baluchistan and Janpur. This is not ideal. However, if you call in one or two of your allies, it will be a lot easier. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and call in Mewar and I'm going to attack Gujarat for this province right here. For your peace deal with Gujarat, what you want to go ahead and take is, of course, the provinces up here, these three provinces as we need them for our mission. You also want to take this remaining core that you have outstanding from Gujarat, and you can also just take something like this so the provinces connect. You also want to see if you can take this center of trade right here. Sometimes, especially if you invite Mewar and you're not quick enough, Mewar will take these provinces. However, Mewar I pre start my war, so I'm going to go ahead and take this and take as much money as I can carry. I really can't have any, actually. No, no money, so I'm just going to take these provinces right here. And once you take these three provinces over here, you complete this mission called Secure Kandesh. It'll give you claims on pretty much all of these parts. You're going to have to abandon your ally of Mewar very, very soon, and you will be able to expand further into Malwa. For your first idea group as Bahmanis, I recommend taking quality ideas. The reason for that is because our army is going to be so powerful that by the time we finish with this first idea group, our army is basically going to be unstoppable. Our army is already really good. I know I don't show the battles in the video. However, I have gotten so many stack wipes and that's because we're only in 1462. Once we finish out quality ideas, get the extra cavalry combat ability, which keep in mind, we already have really good cavalry combat ability because of our traditions as well as infantry combat ability. So we're going to have 20% infantry and 20% cavalry combat ability just from quality ideas alone. So for your first idea as Bahmanis, take quality ideas. And by this point in the game, your truce with Vijayanagar should have ended, and you want to go ahead and declare on Vijayanagar for the claims that you have down here. So go ahead and attack Vijayanagar for one of the provinces right here. This war is going to be super easy as Vijayanagar is still devastated from the first war that you fought against them. And so for your peace deal with Vijayanagar in the second war, you want to go ahead and take something like this. You want to make sure that you take everything that you have claims on. Unfortunately, I wasn't quick enough and my sore actually took this province right here. However, that really isn't that bad. If they take it, I'll just attack them in the next war. It's not too bad, and it looks like they are going to take it anyway. However, the piece that you want to take is everything that you have claims on, which is this right here. Take this so no one else can sneak down into Vijayanagar, and take something like this, which will allow you to attack the other small states. Take something like this. Take a little bit of money if you want. No war reps, though, as we don't want the truce to be too long so that we can go in and attack Vijayanagar once more. And now it is time to declare your next war. Now, your next war can really depend on who is the easiest to attack. Oftentimes, these little Indian nations here will often get eaten up by someone else. In our case, Arissa has basically been almost eaten entirely by Malwa, and now they're being attacked by Bengal, so Alyssa is probably going to go away. However, Malwa took some of the provinces that I need down here, and Malwa has some provinces that I need up here in the north. So for my next war, I'm going to go ahead and attack Malwa. Again, it depends how the map looks. The map in India can vary drastically from game to game, so just pace it out depending on what is happening. But in my game, I'm going to go ahead and attack Malwa or this province right here. I'll call in Mewar later because if I call them in right now, then this person's going to join. So I'd rather just wait until they don't come in. 
And for your peace deal with Malwa, whoever you are fighting up here, just take something like this. Take all of the provinces that you have claims on, as well as maybe one or two other provinces if you'd like. Of course, don't forget the provinces down here if the same person who has the provinces up here also owns the ones over here next to the Indian Ocean. Take these provinces. I'm taking this additional one right here, which is a fort, just because I want to make them suffer so I don't have to retake this fort the next time because it was very, very painful to take. Take whichever provinces you want. Just make sure that you take all of the ones you have claims on and take all of the money. We don't want war reps since we will be going back in relatively soon. Since you are in India, you are going to be struggling to get the institutions. We need to spawn the Renaissance manually since we're very, very far away from Europe and we're not going to get the Renaissance naturally until very, very late, probably and honestly not until the mid 1500s, maybe like the 1520s. So in order to not fall behind on tech and make tech cost a fortune, you should develop your institutions. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I know which province is good to develop? Well, that's really easy. Go to the macro builder here and sort by cost, choose whichever one is the cheapest. In our case, it's almost always going to be a cloth province since cloth gives you some dev cost discounts here. So it's going to be this province right here, which produces cloth, as you can see. Along with this, since the cloth gives minus 10% dev cost, we're also going to put a edict here, the encouraged dev edict, which makes it even cheaper. And if you are lucky, you might have prosperity, which will give an additional minus 10% local dev cost. Unfortunately, I don't have that since I just had rebel ravaging this land. However, make sure you do all of this. It probably will be this province, to be honest, for you, assuming you already have this province. If not, it's probably going to be one of your other cloth provinces. But regardless, make sure you go ahead and dev up the province. You can go ahead and burn one of the tax. And we basically want to keep devving it until we have the Renaissance present. So just keep going and eventually you should be able to get it. And there we go. We're almost there. And there we go. The Renaissance is present. Easy, just like that and now we have the renaissance then you can go ahead and switch this edict to the advancement effort once you're able to do so and you should be getting the renaissance in no time the good part about this is that you will be ahead of time on tech with everyone else of course everyone will start to get it through to the natural spread however you will be ahead of your neighbors for quite some time and you can typically sell the institution once you embrace it to someone else for a decent amount of money i've often been able to find that i can sometimes sell it to ming especially when i improve with them and ming will give you a ton of money for your institutions. If not, you can maybe sell it to someone like Bengal, the Timurids, someone that is relatively big and can give you at the very least a few ducats per month just for sharing institutions. I was actually waiting for my Truce the Vigianagar to be over and it's going to be over in a short amount of time. However, they were basically destroyed by our last war and a bunch of nations broke free. As you can see, Vigianagar actually only has two provinces here on the coast. They lost everything else actually being guaranteed by who is this here? This person? Don't, oh, by this person that broke free from them. Of course, because that makes sense. Yeah, but Vigianagar lost a bunch of their provinces around here. So I actually am able to attack this nation that broke free for the claim that I have right here. So if this doesn't happen in your game, then of course, just go back and re-attack Vigianagar if you weren't able to take it all in the first war. And if you're like me and Vigianagar got destroyed, then you can just go ahead and declare on this nation right here. And for my peace seal, I'm just going to go ahead and take this province right here. That's really all you want. You don't really want anything else since you're going to get claims on it anyway. And you don't want to take any money or war reps since we do want to attack whoever is down here as soon as possible. And there you go. Once you take that province, you can go ahead and complete this mission called Southern Frontier, which will give you claims on the rest of the south of India. Very nice. For your tier three government reform as Bahamas, honestly, all of these are really, really good for India. India. However, the one that I typically like to pick is this one right here, Sindhi Recruitment, where you get minus 10% for maintenance, which you will have a lot of forts, but the extra gov cap is great. You are going to struggle with governing capacity in India. That is something that you're going to struggle with, and I'm sure you guys already knew that, but that is something that you will struggle with, so this definitely does help. However, if you don't want to take this for some reason, then honestly, decentralize is good for the max permanent cultures. You do have a ton of cultures in India, as you can see right here, and you can also take royal favoritism or really anything else. Expanded Royal Court is also pretty good in any game. However, I'm going to take Sindhi Recruitment. And 
And now it is time to slowly polish off these other tiny little nations that have claims on. In your game, it might be a big nation or it might be like in my game that a bunch of tiny little nations broke free from someone bigger and now you have claims on a bunch of different little nations. Either way, your goal should be to completely eat them and finish them off. And like I said, once again, while you're at it, go ahead and just polish off whoever is here so that you can finish getting the rest of your claims. And there we go, of course, with these little nations, depending on who it is. If it's a tiny nation, then just go ahead and fully annex them. If it's a bigger nation, then of course, just take everything that you have claims on. Just like this, we're going to go ahead and do this for this other little nation here. These little random Indian tags can be a bit annoying, but honestly, I think it's slightly better than fighting someone huge like Arissa or Bengal or something for these provinces. And now, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and keep finishing off the polishing of my claims. It's Arissa and they have absolutely no allies, but they have one of my claims. So I'm going to go ahead and attack them and fully annex them. And once you get all of these provinces over here on the coast, you can complete this mission called Conquer and Hara. It's going to give you some really nice dev and some local construction cost discount. For your first plunder ability as Bahmanis, honestly, I'd recommend taking the Justified Wars. You're going to be accumulating so much aggressive expansion. I'm honestly surprised that we don't have a coalition yet. I guess it's mostly because we're allied to everyone and we've mostly been attacking the Hindu nations and we're allied to most of the Muslim nations. I guess that's why we don't have one. But for your first plunder ability, make sure you take Justified Wars. For your second idea group as Bahmanis, I would recommend taking something like trade ideas or economic ideas. However, economic ideas are really not as good as they used to be. They used to be slightly better. They're still okay. However, they're not as good as they used to be. So economic ideas are pretty good. So is infrastructure ideas. Even admin is honestly not bad. However, I would honestly recommend taking trade ideas. You are going to get a massive amount of trade in India. If you want, instead of taking trade ideas, you could alternatively take exploration ideas and rush for these islands here in Indonesia and funnel all the trade towards you and beat the Europeans by decades, if that's really what you want to do. You honestly can do that too. I've seen both of those strategies and I've actually done both of those strategies myself. However, I found that in the game, you tend to make more money by going trade ideas early, and then you can go with the exploration ideas later or just fight the Europeans outright. So for your second idea group as Bahmanis, make sure you take trade ideas. And by this point in the game, your nation should look something like this. We have expanded and defeated almost entirely our starting rival of Vigianagar, which there is a special achievement for that. It's very easy to get. Bahmanis is definitely one of the best nations in India. You have some fantastic starting ideas. You get plus 10% cavalry combat ability from our traditions. You get fantastic armor tradition and your ideas once they're done. You get minus 10% stab cost. You get the manpower recovery speed, the prestige, max promoted cultures, extra trade efficiency, which is why trade ideas is really good. This for the diplomatic grab, you get this was the legitimacy, and then you get this for the idea cost, which is really, really good. On top of that, you are also a Shia nation, which can allow you to layer down the line or for your second idea group, you could also take religious ideas if you really wanted to do that as well. However, the good things don't stop there. With the ideas that we took, mainly quality ideas, our armies are basically unstoppable and you will need a strong army. At some point, someone in northern India is going to consolidate their power. Right now, it is still kind of split between Delhi, Jaunpur, Bengal, and a little bit of Mewar. However, at some point, someone up here in the north is going to consolidate power and you are going to have to fight them. On top of that, once you conquer India, you are going to get claims into Persia and even into Arabia. I know I've done pretty much the entire Bahmanid mission tree. I can tell you, you do get claims in this part of the map and you are eventually at some point going to have to fight someone, whether that's the Timurids, although in our game, it looks like the Timurids are going to go away. However, you are going to have to fight someone big here. Someone will come out of the ashes, whether it's the Timurids, Ajam, the Mamluks, the Ottomans, it's typically the Ottomans from my experience, you are going to have to fight someone big. So you want an army that can stand to it. You also want an economy. And as Bahmanis, you really are not going to struggle with money. In fact, we're already making a ton of money, we're making 14 ducats on the plus, and that's mostly from our tax and our trade as well. You have fantastic production, which is how you're going to be making your money later on in the game. As you can see, we have these fantastic carriages. We have a lot of spices. You can actually trade in spices pretty easily as Bahmanis. So you have fantastic spices. You have lovely amounts of cloth. You even have some pearls here and even some silk as well. 
well. This has been a guide for Bahamanis and EU4 1.35. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and join the Discord if you want to chat with me. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.